characteristics that define SpaceX's odyssey. Flight 6 served as another affirmation of this philosophy. While the mission was deemed a success, especially with regards to the spacecraft, several challenges arose during the process. In typical SpaceX fashion, these challenges served as a catalyst for improvements to their pioneering vehicle. What exactly happened to the spacecraft during Flight 6? Furthermore, how does SpaceX intend to fix these issues in order to increase the sturdiness of their monumental starship? Let's delve into this in detail in today's episode of NR Studio. Flight 6 marked another significant advancement in SpaceX's efforts to advance humanity's connection to Mars. Building on its previous achievements in spaceflight endeavors, SpaceX once again demonstrated its prowess in executing a successful two-stage landing. While discussions regarding the performance of the Super Heavy continue, the progress made with the craft is undeniable. On this occasion, unlike the dramatic consequences witnessed on Flight 5, only a few fires occurred post-landing, indicating clear progress. Nevertheless, the challenges continue to persist, which should be viewed as avenues for further refinement and innovative advancement. A significant concern during Flight 6 was that Starship S-31 was experiencing extreme thermal stress, which caused visible deformation and discoloration of its exterior. The deformation became most pronounced during ascent. At T plus 47 seconds, all systems appeared to be functioning within normal parameters. However, at the 49th second mark, the densities began to manifest and became increasingly apparent as the flight progressed. SpaceX subsequently shared images on social media that clearly emphasized this deformation. In contrast, the discoloration became most evident during re-entry and descent. With the absence of a heat shield in certain areas, parts of the spacecraft turned a blue-purple color, a sure indicator of overheating. The discoloration became particularly evident when sunlight illuminated the impacted regions toward the descent's conclusion, a finding corroborated by SpaceX's post-flight imagery. What factors contributed to these issues? Prior to the flight, SpaceX intentionally removed more than 2,000 heat tiles from S-31 to assess its resilience and to facilitate the implementation of future landing support systems. Furthermore, the angle of descent was modified to be steeper than customary, thereby exposing the spacecraft to more intense conditions. During the process of re-entry, temperatures frequently surpass 1,500 degrees Celsius. Inadequate heat shield protection, combined with a more acute re-entry angle, subjected the stainless steel hull of the S-31, constructed from 304L alloy, to significant stress. This steel, although robust, possesses a melting point that falls short of re-entry temperatures, resulting in deformation and thermal overload. An additional factor that may have contributed is oxidation. The friction incurred during atmospheric re-entry, coupled with the elevated oxygen levels present in the atmosphere, probably led to the oxidation of chromium, nickel, and carbon within the steel alloy, additionally modifying the color and composition of the material. Although these issues did not undermine the overall success of the mission, they pose significant challenges for subsequent iterations. SpaceX intends to implement supplementary systems in regions impacted by these stresses, with the durability of such components being of paramount importance. The performance of the forward flaps during Flight 4 highlights the susceptibility of protruding systems when subjected to extreme conditions. Furthermore, it is probable that thermal shock contributed substantially to the changes observed. At liftoff, the temperature of the spacecraft is significantly low, attributable to the presence of liquid oxygen and methane. As it ascends and encounters vigorous atmospheric friction, temperatures increase significantly, reaching their zenith upon re-entry. Subsequent to this, there is a precipitous decline as the vessel makes contact with the ocean surface. The swift variations in temperature pose a considerable challenge to the structural integrity of even the most sophisticated materials. It is plausible that these stresses played a role in the post-landing failure of S-31's fairing, which as Musk later indicated, detonated after a successful touchdown of the vehicle. SpaceX's unwavering commitment to innovation propels the ongoing development of Starship, with a significant emphasis now placed on essential enhancements to guarantee the spacecraft's preparedness for forthcoming missions, 
particularly those destined for Mars. Among these elements, the heat shield emerges as a critical focus of advancement, providing essential protection for the spacecraft against the extreme thermal conditions encountered during atmospheric reentry. Regardless of the advancements made in the materials employed for Starship, the heat shield will continue to be a crucial component of its design. Fortunately, recent flights have demonstrated promising advancements in this domain. The recovery images from these missions indicate that the new heat shield tiles are exhibiting outstanding performance. These tiles, initially introduced on prototypes such as S-30 and potentially S-31, exemplify the advancements SpaceX has achieved in the aftermath of prior flights. Following Flight 4, Musk remarked that the revised heat shields exhibited double the strength, featuring an ablative layer for improved durability. Moreover, the incidence of tile detachment during flight has markedly diminished, demonstrating SpaceX's methodical iterative strategy for resolving challenges and refining design. Nonetheless, the existing heat shield system is merely a stepping stone toward the ultimate objective. As SpaceX embarks on the transition to Starship 5-2, it is anticipated that sophisticated upgrades will significantly enhance its capabilities. These improvements may make their initial appearance as early as Flight 7, providing a preview of a more robust and efficient system. During the Flight 6 live stream, SpaceX alluded to forthcoming tests of an advanced generation of heat shields meticulously engineered for missions to Mars. A significant challenge that persists is the development of a completely reusable heat shield. Musk has characterized this as the paramount technological challenge that remains for Starship. Among the various solutions under consideration is the implementation of metallic shielding, which may be further enhanced through the use of Ulich gas or liquid film cooling. This advanced system employs a layer of inert gases or liquids to establish a protective barrier between the spacecraft's exterior and the intense heat generated during re-entry. In comparison to ceramic tiles, metallic heat shields exhibit enhanced durability, effectively resisting cracking and damage stemming from thermal stress. Nonetheless, this longevity is accompanied by a greater mass, a compromise that SpaceX must confront. Cooling systems represent a compelling opportunity for enhancing thermal protection. Substances such as methane or water may be employed to modulate temperature and absorb surplus heat, thereby reducing the likelihood of thermal shock. By mitigating abrupt temperature fluctuations and thermal surges, these systems may offer an enhanced protective barrier for the Starship during its most susceptible stages of flight. Nevertheless, each coolant material introduces a distinct array of challenges necessitating rigorous testing and refinement to ascertain the most effective solution. An expeditious approach to mitigate thermal shock and improve the reusability of Starship entails relocating landings from the ocean to the Mechazilla Tower. Ocean landings, although beneficial for initial testing phases, complicate recovery operations and may subject the spacecraft to abrupt temperature fluctuations that can impose stress on its components. Conversely, utilizing the Mechazilla arm to capture Starship would facilitate expedited refurbishment and reduce the turnaround time for subsequent launches. What are your reflections on SpaceX's latest innovations and the obstacles they are striving to address? Please articulate your insights in the comments section below and kindly remember to like, share, and subscribe to remain updated on SpaceX's transformative advancements. Having wrapped up our discussion on Starship updates, let us now redirect our attention to the Falcon 9 and its recent mission with the National Reconnaissance Office, NRO 126. This mission commenced at 3.10 a.m. Eastern from SLC-4E in California, transporting payloads for the National Reconnaissance Office. The mission features a total of 20 Starlink satellites, in addition to an undisclosed number of government satellites which may include two of SpaceX's StarShield satellites. The effort underscores SpaceX's significant contributions to facilitating satellite deployment for commercial and government purposes. Due to security concerns, the live broadcast of the launch was delayed until 46 seconds after liftoff. SpaceX later announced via social media that the Falcon 9 successfully launched the National Reconnaissance Office's in ROL-126 mission along with 20 Starlink satellites into orbit. The mission marks the fifth installment in the National Reconnaissance Office's expanded imaging satellite network, 
a collaborative effort between SpaceX and Northrop Grumman. The previous four missions launched earlier this year in May, June, September, and October. Collectively, these initiatives seek to build the largest government-operated satellite constellation ever recorded. The constellation is slated to launch in mid-2023, utilizing a variety of launch vehicles, including ULA's Delta IV Heavy, Atlas V, and Rocket Lab's Electron. Nevertheless, SpaceX's Falcon 9 has emerged as the frontrunner and is poised to become the launch pad for the future. Three additional NROL missions are currently scheduled for December 2024, underscoring the Falcon 9's critical role in meeting the government's satellite deployment requirements. Its reliability and cost efficiency make it the preferred choice for missions conducted under the National Security Space Launch Program. The Falcon 9 achieved many important milestones during these missions. This event marked the maiden flight of Booster B-1088, the 11th successful recovery of the of course I still love you drone ship, and the 377th successful landing overall for SpaceX. Importantly, this marked the 100th successful launch from Pad SLC 4E in California, a notable achievement given the ongoing challenges SpaceX faces with the local regulatory framework governing rocket launches in the area. As we approach the end of 2024, SpaceX still has the opportunity to set additional records. Given their incredible momentum, it will be interesting to see what milestones they achieve before the end of the year. That's it for today's episode. See you in the next episode.